Mr. Chair, members of the committee, uh, I'm Ed Ellinger, the Commissioner of Health, and thank you for this opportunity to be here this evening. Uh, when I first became engaged in this conversation uh, several months ago, uh, I stated that my goal was to try to get um, the powerful chemicals that are in, in part of the cannabis plant uh, to patients who need those chemicals in a safe and effective way. I also identified, as has been part of this conversation just most recently, is that uh, there is inadequate information to really make some uh, decisions about how to use medical cannabis in the most effective way, and that for a whole variety of reasons we've not been able to have that, that research done, uh, but that it's clearly <coughs> evident that we need some more information. And so with that, that need as my, in my role as Commissioner to improve and protect the, the health of the people of Minnesota, I believe that the work that you have done to come to this point with this, with this bill does all of that. It helps get medication to patients who really need it uh, and also allows us to gather some information which will help us to determine where to go from this point on. Uh, the registry that, that we are talking about has been one of the things that has been identified in every other state that has uh, implemented a medical cannabis law. That they, my colleagues in other states, the, the commissioners of health who monitor this programs, have been really pining for information about how best to determine what dose is appropriate for what condition, uh, what the, the quality of the drug for a, a certain condition. Are there some side effects? Where are the benefits? What are the risks? What are the, the problems that are developing? Even though this is not a clinical trial, this has been a, the this patient registry uh, has been shown to be a way to gather uh, qualitative and subjective data on how these chemicals actually function. Uh, so over the course of the next several years, as we collect more and more of this information, we will have a lot more information to, to use in determining how to proceed with the other uh, clarifying what doses are, are uh, helpful, which ones are not, where problems may uh, come about and, and where we see some real benefits. Uh, so I'm here to say thank you for the work that you've done on this. I think as I look around the, the country, this is probably the, from a, from a medical and a public health perspective, this is the best bill that I've seen because it does get medications to, to the people who really need it, but it allows us to collect some information so that we can make uh, reasoned decisions as we move forward on how best to approve this. Uh, certainly, we've, I have staff with me today who have done some of the fiscal notes and have done some of the work on, on uh, the implementation uh, because we are committed once this bill is uh, signed into law to, to begin immediately to start working on all of the things that need to be done to make sure that we have this up and running as rapidly as possible and meet it, really meeting the needs of uh, the individuals who have been really vocal in trying to move this forward and, and the legislators, the policymakers who have been really been committed to working with us and uh, to, to make this the best bill possible. So with that, I'm open for any questions and, and uh, comments that you have. Thank you, Commissioner. Questions, members? All right, well, uh, let me say um, thank you um, for, your, for your comments and thank you for your advice. And, uh, and, uh, and I know that we spent a lot of time working um, with you know, providing technical assistance as well as your staff um, to help out with this, um, as well as working with um, uh, the governor and his staff. So I appreciate all the time that works. Uh, Senator Peterson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I was trying to give other members the opportunity to <coughs> ask questions if they if they wanted to. Thanks for joining us, Commissioner. Um, you had mentioned something that I, I wholeheartedly agree with, which is that this bill gets cannabis to people who really need it, and I, I think I think it does. I think it does get it to the people, the five thousand uh, people that that uh, we estimate in the bill. Um, the Senate bill had, uh, would benefit approximately 38,000, 39,000 by estimates. I guess what I'm curious about is why don't, um, why don't the other people really need it? Or, or should I say, why do these people really need it and the other ones don't? What's, what's the difference in your, in your opinion? Commissioner. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Peterson, I mean, those those are our decisions that the policymakers will make. You know, I we, I provide testimony and information about what we know medically, what we know public health, what we know in terms of implementing a program. 
Uh, lots of discussion has been occurred on, uh, you know, the, the, the conditions that should be in place, the, the forms that yeah, should be used. Uh, those are policy decisions that, that, that you're making. I'm uh, here to you know, give the technical advice, the scientific advice, or information, uh, and, uh, and the implementation uh, issues that we would have as the department administering this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I appreciate that response. Um, you said that we're the policy makers, so, that, so we're the ones that decide. But isn't it true, Commissioner Ellinger, that were it not for your administration uh, and the governor, we would have a much more expansive bill. Uh, and that it is only because of your position, your public statements, the governor's public statements and veto threats that we're stuck with this limited bill. Um, and, and when you say things like get cannabis to people who really need it, to me, that seems like a subjective statement that you're making. Um, I, think, I think it's debatable whether or not every legislator agrees with that statement. I know the original House bill and, and Senate bill that passed off the floor um, was of the, of the mind that, that there was significantly more people that, that really needed it. And I think it would be intellectually uh, suspect to suggest that we're in this position for any other reason than your bosses, Governor Mark Dayton, uh, unwillingness, frankly, to engage in a meaningful debate on the issue, and your testimony and those of your uh, subordinates and committee. So um, I guess since you went so far as to say uh, that, that this bill addresses those people who really need it, in your opinion, I would imagine, um, I guess what I'm looking for is why is it that you or the administration in general felt like the other ones didn't need it, and what's the difference between the two of them, between the two groups? So, uh, Commissioner, there are some elements in there that, that you can respond to on this, maybe that. And Mr. Chair and, and Senator Peterson, um, <coughs> there are, as what I'm trying to do is to uh, get the right medicine to the right people in the right dosage at the right time. Uh, and part of, we know that we don't have enough information. With the group that we have in this bill will allow us to do some assessment that will help us move to the, the next level of understanding of that. Uh, some of the other conditions that were in there would have made it more difficult to have the kind of assessment needed uh, to make those, those judgments. We also, uh, one of my uh, statements early on is to try to link, make sure that the treatment of uh, these individuals who are going to be using medical cannabis are linked to their medical care provider. Uh, and these conditions uh, here uh, have been, are things that I've talked with my medical colleagues that they are comfortable, or, well, uh, they, they are, are willing to work with in, in a doctor-patient relationship. Uh, the way the bill is written to move forward on these conditions so that we will be able to gather information on this. If we would had ex included other conditions, we may not have had the same kind of level of cooperation and understanding, and we probably would not have been able to get the right, the kind of data that we need to make some decisions. This is, I'm sure, going to be an ongoing process uh, as we come forward, as, as I come forward with new recommendations on a yearly basis of what other conditions to add. We will have a lot more information that we're going to be gathering from other states from around the world and from the data that we collect here. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Commissioner, for taking the question. Um, Representative Hamilton. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and I don't know if this is a question directed at um, <coughs> the authors, if you could answer this, or the Commissioner can. And I've had, um, since appointed to this committee, had a few inquiries about um, uh, the veterans and you know the post-traumatic stress and stuff like that. And, and uh, I'm hoping that uh, we can uh, be open to the idea and work together to see if we need to be uh, more, you know, uh, encompassing. And I think it's going down the same line of line of uh, thought process that you are, Senator, as well. And and I think it's also important to know that I went from absolutely opposed to this uh, coming into this legislative session to serving on this conference committee and 
And uh, so again, uh, the other areas that uh, where there may be a need or an interest, um, I wonder if there's uh, language in there that can help me out to, to address that as well. Um, yes, uh, uh, Representative Hamilton, and you know, I'll just say for the record, you know, um, I, I do think it's regrettable um, that um, folks who, who might be able to benefit um, from medical cannabis capture in this proposal. Um, there is the opportunity um, uh, uh, to consider expanding the list, um, and that starts with, um, of course, the definition of uh, qualifying medical condition, um, uh, uh, which is uh, item number 10 of subdivision 14, uh, line 3.24, any other medical condition or treatment approved by the commissioner, then a process is provided uh, for that consideration. Of course, we do have an already acknowledged um, intractable pain not connected to a particular diagnosis is the first thing uh, for the commissioner to consider on that section 20, uh, back on page 23, um, in a little process set forth, working in conjunction with the task force. The task force plays a role as well in the other processes set forth, too. <coughs> as well, uh, Representative Hamilton, methods or, of, of consuming medical cannabis or the forms of medical cannabis also could be added to the list. And then uh, the, the process set forth um, of consideration and adding to the list. Okay, so that's on uh, page seven, starting on line 29. Um, paragraph B, if the commissioner wishes to add a delivery method or a qualifying medical condition, um, there's a process of notifying the legislature, um, receiving comments from the public, um, <coughs> guidance from the task force, um, and then some time standards are, are set forth uh, for the decision to be made kind of at the beginning of a legislative session, allowing the legislative session to pass, giving the legislature the opportunity to act. Um, and if they don't act, um, then the, I, the, either the form and method of delivery or the condition is added to the list. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and members, and uh, I, I just wanted to talk a little bit in response to the questions. Um, and, you know, this is, for me, like so many people, a, a question, an, an evolving question. Although I have, you know, supported um, and voted for medical marijuana at least twice since I've been elected in, in a broader bill, um, I was... Um, at first, I think very skeptical about the idea of engaging in some sort of clinical trial um, when that idea was first um, proposed uh, by the administration, um, but feel fairly strongly about, in fact, quite strongly about the idea of a patient registry um, because I do think that as we are making that transition from um, our own perspectives about marijuana to the idea of putting into law medical cannabis in Minnesota. Um, I think we are joining other states and other countries that are on that edge of inquiry and learning about the preparations that are going to be available to people and how they interact, how those chemicals interact with a person's condition disease. And um, I, I think if we agree that the, the compounds in the whole plant extracts um, have a powerful chemical effect on a person's condition. If we agree on that, then I think it's important that we also agree um, that we should understand that to the best of our ability. And while it would have been, I think, awesome for us in Minnesota to proceed with a full clinical trial, the, the, the thought of conducting that from a state legislature, putting that into policy, passing a bill, affording that, um, while we're not the experts, allowing you know places like the University of Minnesota and the Mayo Clinic lead that charge for us, um, I think it was a very ambitious goal. Um, so I think moving forward with the idea of a registry to do that observational research was something that really earned support of a number of uh, I think members who were not inclined to support this proposal in the House. 
um, which I think is important. Um, I think it has earned um, the attention of, of the medical community in a, in a way that I think gives this and that thus Minnesotans who are skeptical some confidence in what we're doing. And I do think it's going to help us learn going forward. I would love it if we could include everybody. I think also, like Senator Dibble and probably everybody at this table, um, uh, find it um, the, the challenge of the environment in which we work and the decisions that we have to make. But going forward, I think we're going to be in stronger position if we take this step first, if we build upon a solid foundation of not only um, taking what we've learned from other states, from what other countries are already doing, and you know, there certainly is clinical trial going on in other parts of the world that we can learn from, but also then to build upon what we're able to learn by taking a first solid foundational step um, and then building on that. And I have all the confidence in the world. I really do have confidence that on this foundation, we will have a better understanding of how these chemicals work with various conditions, and with that confidence can come back and look at other issues and other conditions and see how we build on this foundation for people in Minnesota and not only um, serve the Minnesotans that are interested in this well, but also contribute to um, both the science and the knowledge and the treatment of people in other parts of the country. So while I agree with your concern about the number of people, I also think that we are taking an important step in terms of understanding the science underneath this, and it's going to you know, help people in the future of Minnesota, and I think that's important as well. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you, uh, Senator Peterson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I have a question uh, regarding Section 12, and I'm not certain that the Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Ellinger, at least, would uh, <coughs> speak to the criminal justice related questions. Um, one of the questions that I have would be uh, a patient that possesses medical cannabis and maybe is involved in a traffic stop or some other sort of stop by law enforcement. Um, it doesn't seem to me anywhere in the bill that would require that the law enforcement officer uh, at least establish whether or not the person is a medical cannabis patient or registered uh, patient before they conduct a probable cause search of that individual's person or their vehicle, for example. Um, so, um, you know, going with my example, you're pulled over, you have, uh, they, they see something suspicious, maybe it's a vaping device, mm -hmm. and there's hash oil in it. Um, and upon that basis, the law enforcement officer can, uh, uses that as probable cause uh, to search the vehicle before um, ever doing sort of the due diligence that's required, I suppose, under this statute, which says that some people can legally do it and therefore it probably shouldn't be a probable cause or, the, or, or justify the establishment of probable cause. I'm just curious um, what, what we're doing in the bill to make sure that people aren't illegally searched or having their sort of rights violated um, as a result of being in possession of medical cannabis. Um, I'll ask Councilor Allen to answer that question. <laughs> Mr. Chair, Senator Peterson, that there is some protection on page 16, line 22, that states that the possession of a registry verification, which the patient is given from the commissioner or an application for enrollment into the registry, alone does not constitute probable cause in that situation. Um, there are also places throughout the bill and in current law that say that you cannot be vaping medical cannabis in a vehicle, while driving a vehicle. Of course. Um, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, I guess I do see that, and I saw that in the bill, um, that, that possessing a registration card does not constitute probable cause by itself. But that still doesn't mean that um, if somebody, for, for some reason, a law enforcement officer sees that you're in possession, for some reason, of cannabis of any form, that, that would not, it, given the fact that we don't have to specifically enumerate that in the bill, that, that, wouldn't, that, the, that, that would not establish probable cause in the, in the mind of that officer and therefore result in a, in a broader search of that individual's person 
or vehicle, um, for example, or home, for that matter. So, um, Senator Peterson, I'll, I'll, uh, there's a couple of things I think that, that might, um, I mean, we, we, don't, we don't have the, the card, the registry card, um, as, as we did in the Senate proposal. Um, so someone wouldn't have a, like a card they could just show um, the, the commissioner or the, excuse me, the police officer. Um, but, um, uh, you know, we do have folks who are, um, you know, on the, on the registry list and, and um, you know, that list would be, I think, probably fairly easy um, to, to verify. Um, also, you know, when folks have uh, medical cannabis in their possession and be in a container um, that's, that's labeled, with the number of identifiers, including their name and you know, and the fact that this is medical cannabis for, for medical purposes and the like, uh, so that you know is something that can, is a way to communicate um, to the officer. Um, it's not specifically spelled out or called for, I don't think, in the bill um, for folks to carry um, something with them that, that shows their um, their status, a piece of paper or something, um, as, as a as a a patient on the, on the registry, but you know, probably shouldn't uh, for, that, for that reason. Um, you know, the, the, the same challenge, of course, is true no matter what um, in, in every state and in other ways. So, so it's, it's hard to stop an officer um, from conducting the, at least the initial inquiry, um, but then, you know, there are various remedies for at least demonstrating fairly early on as the officer starts to wonder what's going on to say, hey, this is cool, it's medical cannabis, it's in a right kind of canister with the right notifications, here's my piece of paper. Sure. Um, you know, and hopefully the commissioner will help folks figure that out. And we have the task force with law enforcement, um, and I know other states have developed guidance um, documents to local law enforcement um, for how to, how to respond to when they think they have probable cause, figure out pretty quickly if they don't, this is perfectly fine, it's just to stop. I've seen some of those documents from other states. Mr. Chair, thank you. Uh, it would be safe to say, though, that there's really no, under this bill, there's really no way to prevent that or no requirement of law enforcement, for example, to at least ask if that is something that they're presented with before they well, be proceeding. Senator Peterson, thank you, Mr. Chair, Senator Peterson. Um, you know, the scenario that you raise, the only circumstance I could see would be a search subsequent to an arrest in which probable cause for arrest would have had to have been established. And then um, there could be a search subsequent to arrest in which, you know, if medical cannabis is found, as Senator Dibble pointed out, uh, we already have all the identifying features required on the label. And so uh, if that is the person that's in possession of it, um, you know, I don't foresee that they would um, be able to face any criminal charges for possessing it. Um, just as right now, if you were arrested and uh, there was a search subsequent to arrest and an officer found a uh, prescription bottle on you, if you are that person who's on the prescription bottle, then you certainly aren't in any unlawful possession of any sort of controlled substance, which I think would be the same um, circumstance here. So. Um, there are a number of protections in the bill, I think, that would address that issue um, exactly that you raised. So, you know, I don't see any concerns myself in that regard. Senator Peterson. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I won't stay on this forever. I do hope it's something that we dig into uh, with, with the task force. I don't think that's 100% the case, uh, Representative Molina. Uh, I do believe that the, that the reason or the threshold that needs to be reached in order to be stopped by a peace officer is reasonable suspicion, not probable cause. And so uh, I do think there are scenarios that, um, that in fact, you could be subject to a search um, if, if it becomes known that you're possessing cannabis and the individual hasn't established that you are lawfully uh, carrying it. But I, I, just for the record, I think that there is some gray area, obviously, um, in this area of the bill. Uh, that's all I have on this, though, Mr. Chair. Well, Mr. Chair, Senator Peterson, I mean, just for clarity purposes, so the standard for a traffic stop would be reasonable, articulable suspicion, which doesn't quite rise to the level of probable cause, but in order to search a suspect, it has to rise to the level of probable cause. 
in possession of a controlled substance would be, Mr. Chair, uh, would establish probable cause uh, if you weren't aware that that individual was uh, a medical, a legal medical, medical cannabis. But, Mr. Chair, Senator Peterson, you wouldn't know that they were in possession of a controlled substance or medical cannabis without the search, which had to first be established by probable cause through an arrest. But we can let that I, I, think we, I think there's <laughs> going to but uh, <laughs> I'll leave it alone. Very good. Um, anything further, Commissioner? No. Nope. All right. Anything further, members? Further, Commissioner? All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much.